on this historic election in the United States. Maha, thank you for joining us and good morning. On the diplomatic front, the 2 plus 2 dialogue and the Quad meeting was recently held and the United States firmly in India's corner when it comes to terrorism and Chinese expansionism. Uh, are we going to see any outreach from the Modi government so that the Biden administration stays on the same page as, that, as, as the system was left by the Trump administration? Good morning, Ayushman. That has already started, in fact, uh, sensing the mood on the ground that this election could go any way, either way, rather. Uh, the U.S., uh, the Indian mission in the United States had already started uh, speaking with a lot of people on the Democratic uh, two of the important uh, uh, people from the Indian American community who have been very vital in the Obama administration also, Raj Shah and Vivek Murthy, are two people uh, that the ambassador has been has met, in fact, over the last uh, few months. In fact, Vivek Murthy is being considered one person who could get a vital role in uh, Biden's administration as well. He has played a key role in his, re in his election bid uh, for the president as well, uh, playing a very important role in his campaign as well. So he's one of the crucial persons that uh, India has reached out to, the Indian mission in the United States. Apart from that, key meetings with other Democrats have also taken place over the last six months. Some of them were pretty public. Uh, in fact, uh, the ambassador tweeted about it himself. Uh, this was with uh, uh, with uh, Ami Vera, another Indian American who has been elected. The House of Representatives, as well as Engel, uh, who was the uh, the heading the House of Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, as for the issue of China is concerned, we also asked uh, a U.S. senior U.S. administration officials before uh, Mike Pompeo from the Trump administration traveled to India for the two plus two dialogue, and we asked him this specific question as to whether uh, the support uh, to India against China will continue, and the administration of uh, said that they have reasons to believe that it is going to change even if there is a change in administration at that time election had not taken place uh, from a Republican to a Democratic side. They said both parties are on the same page as far as supporting India against uh, China considering the expansionist behavior of China and the ever-aggressive nature of China. Uh, Indo-Pacific remains a very important area for America and the, the, the manner in which we've seen uh, the, the cooperation in Indo-Pacific between India, US, Japan and Australia having been amped up over the last, uh, uh, last one year and especially over the last few months is likely to remain. As far as other issues are concerned, for instance, trade, we saw Donald Trump really going after India uh, very openly as far as tariffs were concerned. He believed that the tariffs being uh, levied by India were so India maintained that they were all being within the organization. It's been an issue where things keep cropping up. It's like being on a treadmill and constantly you know, um, removing the hurdles as far as trade are concerned. Yes, of course, D Donald Trump was very open about it, very publicly. He tried to, you know, through social media, uh, tried to uh, arm twist, as many would have called India. However, those issues, that rhetoric might now subside, but issues as far as trade are concerned between any two countries that are trading partners continue to take place and uh, they will continue to get sorted out uh, as per uh, what both sides feel comfortable with. So these are some of the broader aspects on which uh, the India-US relationship is determined. Uh, most analysts believe that it is largely bipartisan, whichever uh, whichever party comes to power in America, it doesn't matter uh, because the relationship is on and even is is steady now. We're also joined by Camilla Bernal, who's coming to us from Wilmington in Delaware. Uh, Camilla, thank you for joining us. Uh, ce celebratory scenes uh, from the Democratic side from Wilmington in Delaware. But Biden has a challenging time uh, ahead of him, the Democratic majority in the House of Representatives has shrunk. Republicans maintain control in the Senate. There is a 6-3 conservative majority in the Supreme Court. Republicans can still mount a stiff challenge over the next four years. 
Yeah, look, and I think uh, what Biden said tonight as he addressed the crowd, as he addressed his supporters, and as he talked to America about uh, unifying the country, reaching across the aisle, working with Republicans and Democrats, that all will be put to the test if we do end up having a Republican majority in the Senate. And so what you're hearing tonight from this presidential address from the president-elect is, of course, that moving forward, he is planning on working specifically on the the pandemic on COVID-19, the economy, things like climate change, and so many other issues that he believes he will be able to work on. But the key here is going to be, will he be able to work with Republicans? That is what he's used to doing when he was in the Senate representing Delaware. He is friends with Mitch McConnell and many others in leadership in Washington, D.C. But it will be interesting to see if this new sort of generation of people in Washington, D.C., uh, will also work with him and will also reach across the aisle. It has been a divided country, and it will be a likely divided White House and Congress. And so everything will be put to the test, and it will be interesting to see if they're able to get work done moving forward, specifically a maybe a relief package for this COVID-19 pandemic, something that may be able to help the economy moving forward, but that will require both sides to be working together to get anything done. Also, where does Donald Trump's legal challenge currently stand? Because Rudy Giuliani, his lawyer, has said that more lawsuits will come from Monday. Yeah, we do expect this to continue to be a battle here and a battle in the courts in particular. What will be interesting to note here or to see moving forward is how much is Joe Biden going to win by? How many states are actually going to end up being called for Joe Biden? And what the strategy is going to be from the president's legal team moving forward? Because if there are a number of states that maybe are not called at the moment that are called uh, for Joe Biden in the coming days, it's going to be harder for the president. Right now, they're very focused on Pennsylvania and what they're going to be able to do legally there. But they might have to end up working with a number of other states. And so that becomes a little bit more difficult for the Trump legal team. We know uh, that President Trump, at least yesterday, was not very pleased or not very happy with the team that he has at the moment and was hoping to build a stronger, better legal team. But you have to keep in mind that this is also going to be very expensive. Recounts can be very expensive. They could be in the millions of dollars. And it might be the campaigns who are having to pay for recounts or for any of these lawsuits. So moving ahead, both of these campaigns are going to need a lot of money and it is likely also going to take some time. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of days, weeks or months to come. Also, Camilla, two prominent Indian Americans, former U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy and Harvard economist Raj Chetty are among, are among Biden's core advisors who have been guiding him through the campaign. Can we see them get top jobs in the Biden administration? It's still too soon to tell because, of course, uh, nobody wants to talk about that just yet. We'll have to see uh, what happens and who he picks for his cabinet and for his administration. But I think it is also really important to point out uh, Kamala Harris and her South Indian roots and her immigrant roots because that, of course, is historic as the first female uh, vice president-elect of the United States. And when we heard from Joe Biden today, he talked about what this was, the significance of having a woman, an immigrant, a black woman, a South Asian woman by his side, and the sort of ability of doing anything you dream of in this country, and Kamala Harris being that example of being able to do whatever you choose to do in this country, no matter who you are or what you look like, and the example that she's setting for generations to come. Thank you, Camilla Bernal, for joining us from Wilmington in Delaware.